And then you also may want to use a bone folder, which is just this little tool that helps you get really flat creases when you're folding your zine. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, I'm Brie and I love zines. And today I wanna to talk specifically about the mini zine. So if you're familiar with the zines, you know there are different formats that you can make them in, and one of the most popular is the mini zine because you can make it using one single sheet of paper. So I'm going to show you how you can fold your mini zine perfectly, how you can find mini zines in your area or online for free, and I'm going to give you a little mini zine tour of both digitally made zines and zines that are made by hand. If you've never heard of zines before, they are just like handmade magazines, except for unlike traditional magazines, zines are focused more on self-expression, sharing ideas, sharing art, interviewing people. You know, there really are no rules to zines except for their DIY, and they're very cheap to make. Because usually people will print their own zines from home, they're very janky. You don't have to go through a publisher or an editor to approve or deny it. There is no middleman to this. You could just fold up a sheet of paper and make your ideas come to life with it. That's what it's for. In traditional magazines, they usually cost a lot of money and they're focused on selling ad space. So the zine is like the anti-magazine. So keep that in mind. I know a lot of people hear zine and they're like, oh, it's just a mini magazine. But to get the true definition of it, it's it's actually the opposite of a magazine. And if you want to learn more about that, I do have a video on it. It's called Zines Are Not Magazines. And I will link other resources and videos that I've made on zines in the description if you want to learn more. So first, let's talk about how you can make this mini zine with one single sheet of paper. I'm going to show you how to fold one using one sheet of eight and a half by 11 printer paper. So this is just your standard copier paper. I'm using pink because I think it'll be easier for you to see the folds, but you can use any color you want. And then you also may want to use a bone folder, which is just this little tool that helps you get really flat creases when you're folding your zine. If you don't have one of these, you can also use your nails. You can use the side of a ruler. You can use the side of a pair of scissors, you can even use a penny, anything that has a little flat edge, like even your library card or ID card or credit card will work for this. So like I said before, the materials you'll need to make your zine is a single sheet of eight and a half by 11 printer paper, a bone folder, and a pair of scissors. The first thing you want to do is take your sheet of paper and you want to fold it hot dog style like this. Make sure that you line up the edges of the paper really well because this is going to help with the final fold. I'm gonna use my bone folder to flatten the creases, but like I said, you can also use your nails. You can use anything with a flat edge. I like to go in and make sure I really get it flat. It's important to get these really flat because it's gonna help with your folding. If you don't fold it flat enough, the final fold will come out really janky and you'll have the paper creep over the edges. It'll just look really messy. So make sure you get those really flat. So now that you have your hot dog style sheet of paper, you wanna take this and you wanna fold it in half like this. Then you take this and fold it in half again. There are several ways to do this. A lot of people fold differently. This is just the way that I've always folded a mini zine. And right here, I'm just making sure I get all of the edges really flat. So now you have your little booklet, but we're not done yet. Open up your sheet of paper. This is how your sheet of paper should look. Now you want to fold this hamburger style, which is this way. Make sure you fold it with this open side facing that way because we're going to cut all of this right here. So take your scissors, cut this middle crease. So you see how I just cut right to the center? That's all you have to do. Make sure you cut that. And this next part is tricky, so you might want to rewatch this a few times, but now you're going to unfold the entire thing. You'll have a slit just in the middle there. So now what we're going to do is fold it down hot dog style, which is this long way. You want this open, completely open side to be facing down and the part with the middle slit facing towards you. And in order to make your mini zine, you just push this all in together like this. And then you fold it all up. Make sure you flatten all the sides and you have your completed mini zine. So if you did everything correctly, you should have a mini zine that looks like this. And when you open it, it'll have eight pages. Now all you have to do is go in and decorate. 
really easy stuff right it was really simple and if you have trouble folding that part where you have to squeeze it in the middle after cutting the middle slit that is a very common occurrence don't feel bad a lot of people get confused at that part so just keep rewatching the video to make sure that you get it really down so if you want to find zines like this in your city I highly suggest checking out small bookstores I'm not talking about Barnes & Noble or Target or anything like that you won't find any zines there because it's all self-published so you're usually gonna find these in more underground spaces so I would definitely check out small bookstores like your local small mom and pop books shop. You can also find them in skate shops, you can find them in music stores, stuff like that where they sell records, and also try checking out your local library. I know a lot of public libraries have zine centers now or they host zine workshops and then in association they also have zine collections that you can rent out zines. So definitely look that up in your city. Another place you can find zines if you're having trouble finding them in your city is to look online for zine distributors. So I will list in the description a couple of zine distributors that I go through these people they gather zines from all over the world and then they resell them to people that want to buy zines they also publish and print zines for zine makers so if that's a service that you're looking for I definitely recommend looking these up I'll list a few in the description and then another way that you can find zines to read for free are checking out free zine archives online there's one that I always post in every video I think the people that upload the zine archives they take zines that they have in their collection they scan them in so they make them into PDFs and then they upload upload them so people all over the world can read them for free. So that's another great way to find zine inspiration and zines that you can read. A lot of people like to do zine trades. So in order to set that up, you just reach out to someone that is making zines and ask them if they would like to trade. So you would have to trade a zine with them. So make sure that you have that ready before you offer up a trade. Also, you can just give out zines for free too. If you wanted to, uh, to be able to distribute your zine, you can just take mini zine like this, pass it out, to people that are walking past you. You can drop them off at coffee shops because a lot of coffee shops have bulletins. You could just stick this up on the bulletin. Hopefully someone reads it. Or you can just donate your zines to your local library. That's something that I do so people could read my zines. Those are ways that you can distribute your zine and way that you can find other people's zines. Now I'm going to give you a little tour of different zines that I have just to give you um, a wide variety of the type of zines that you can make. But just keep in mind, there are no rules to making zines. They are all about self-expression. There's no censorship. There really are no rules rules to this except for that you make it yourself. It's all DIY. So DIY can mean making it on your iPad or with Photoshop or it can mean just making the entire thing by hand by cutting and collaging and stuff like that. So I'm going to show you some of mine from my collection and hopefully they inspire you. Here is a zine that was made digitally. It's called Pre-Period Party by Katie Soldevia. And when I say it was made digitally, you can tell that this creator made it on their iPad. I'm not sure what program that they used, but usually when I make zines like this where I'm illustrating on my iPad, I use Procreate. One of my favorite things about zines, mini zines specifically, is that you're trying to utilize all the space, right? So you're trying to convey a message with only eight pages, but a lot of people don't consider that when you open up a mini zine, there is a whole nother side. So this is what Katie did. This is their zine on the other side and on the back, they made a little poster with pre-period party snack favorites. This zine is created with cardstock, so it is a little thicker. This is really great if you want to make a poster, that way it's more reusable. But usually zines are made with just regular copier paper like I showed you when we were folding. So for example, this zine is called Make Your First Zine The Game, and this is by Sierra De Carmen. And this is just made out of 20 pound copier paper, which is just your standard printer paper. And this is also made digitally. You can tell that this was created on something similar like Procreator Photoshop, maybe even a Word document. And this is basically a game on teaching you how to make a zine. So if you're interested in making a zine digitally, I will link in the description a template that you can use to format your zine in Procreate or Photoshop. I don't use Photoshop. I'm not that familiar with it. I do use Procreate. So I will link a few videos and resources on how you can format it when you use those apps. And here is another digitally made zine and this one could be a mixture of making it digitally and by hand because this definitely looks like someone's handwriting. It could be a text, it could be a, a way of like a font. This is another cool way to make your zines if you did want to make some stuff digitally and by hand and then just combine the two. That's something that a lot of zine makers do and this one is called But My Comfort Zone Is So Comfy featuring Toady. And that's Toady. <laughs> 
Speaking on mixing formats or mixing media, this is a zine that I made back in 2016 and I definitely did mixed media collaging with this. A lot of it was my own handwriting. I also tore up from some magazines, but the font that I'm using here, I definitely just whipped that up in a Word document, printed it out, and then collaged it over this. This one is called One Sketch and Some Thoughts, Volume 2. And then at the end here, it says Unfold Me, and this is another example of utilizing the back of your zine to double as a poster. And this I made by hand because I, I remember getting a comment once of someone asking me how they can make a poster on the back but they weren't familiar with Photoshop. I just drew this on a sheet of paper before I cut it into a zine and everything. I just drew this out on a sheet of paper and then I folded it up like a zine, right? And just started making my zine and then once I was finished I went in and cut it and made it a zine so hopefully that's easier easy to understand but you don't need Photoshop or Procreate to do the poster on the back you can just take a sheet of paper and you can collage you can draw you can write you can do whatever you want here's another example of a handmade zine this is really cool someone sent me this from Canada and this is a mini zine by Mon. They sent me this from Canada and it is their master copy. So all of these stickers they're using are the real stickers that this isn't a copy. You will be able to tell they made this by hand. So like I was saying earlier, you can take Word documents, stuff that you type up on your computer and print it out. From being folded so much, it's kind of like coming up, but that's an easy fix. I could just put tape over it. But just giving you the feel of how handmade it is, that is the essence of zines, you know, is being able to create with whatever you have on hand. And you can see there's some collaging going on. It looks like a receipt in the back there and then they just drew over it and here's my last example of a zine that's made by hand this one is so touching and so sweet this was another zine that was sent to me and they drew this that's me that's <laughs> my comfort beanie my glasses even my piercings they got it all right in the green in my hair and this was a thank you zine from Matt my name is Matt I'm a writer and amateur artist from New York I found your YouTube channel when I was trying to find out more information on making and distributing zines zines are something I wish I'd known about when I was a kid but at least I know about them now mostly because of you and your passion for zine making. So I just want to say thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and excitement for zines and your encouragement, motivation, and inspiration. This was so cute. I love this zine so much. And this is by Matt. So that's all you need to make a zine, folks. I hope it was easy to understand. I hope the examples really helped you out too. Everything that I mentioned in the earlier parts of the video about distribution, um, even the zines that were sent to me and the zine examples that I showed you, everything will be linked in the description down below. I hope that you have fun making your zines. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.